In this lecture, we are going to discuss an application of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which can be used to find the number of trailing zeros in factorial of a number. In the previous lectures, we discussed the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and the canonical decomposition of a composite number. Now here we are going to discuss an application of the fundamental theorem and the floor function. We can use the fundamental theorem and the floor function to determine the number of trailing zeros in the decimal value of n factorial. If you are given a number n, then in the decimal value of n factorial, we can find the number of trailing zeros of that n factorial by using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and floor function. For example, we know uh, if n is equal to 11, then 11 factorial is equal to 39916800. So it has two trailing zeros. In the expression of 11 factorial as a decimal number, here we have two trailing zeros. Such number of trailing zeros can be found by using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and a floor function. For example, find the number of trailing zeros in 234 factorial. So without expanding this 234 factorial in decimal form, we are going to find the number of trailing zeros in that 234 factorial. So actually we know a trailing zero means one zero that is there may be a factor 10 in this factorial. So we have 10 is equal to 2 into 5. So by we know uh, by fundamental theorem we can express 234 as we 234 factorial as the product of primes that is 234 factorial can be factored as 2 power a into 5 power b into c where a and b are positive integers a and b are positive integers and c denote the product of the primes other than 2 and 5 so here we consider only 2 and 5 and the other primes uh, other primes will be taken in this c Okay, so C may be denotes the product of primes other than 2 and 5. So we are taken 2 and 5 only because we have we need to find the number of trailing zeros. So corresponding to a 0, we have a factor 10 in the 234 factorial. So uh, a factor 10 can be factorized by this 2 into 5. Okay, so we are taking 2 power a into 5 power c and the other factors or uh, other prime factors will be contained in this C. Okay, so clearly a is greater than b. That means number of 2 is greater than the number of 5s. Uh, that is a is greater than b. So each trailing 0 in 234 factorial corresponds to a 10 in a factorization and vice versa. So each 10 can be expressed as 2 into 5. So number of trailing zeros in 234 factorial is nothing but number of products of the form 2 into 5 in a prime factorization of 234 factorial clear that is in a prime factorization of 234 factorial if there is any 2 into 5 then we have it is actually 10 10 into then another 2 into 5 means another 10 that is 10 into 10 that is 100 so we have two trailing zeros so corresponding to a trailing zero we will have a, a, a 10 in the factorization that means we will have a factorization like 2 into 5 so number of trailing zeros in 234 factorial is actually number of product of 2 into 5 okay number of product of the form 2 into 5 in a prime factorization of 234 factorial that means number of uh, product of 2 into 234 factorial is nothing but the minimum value of a and b because here if there are uh, four twos and uh, uh, 2 a's then we have we have this uh, 2 into 5 2 into 5 then we have only 2 into 2 so 10 will be occurred two times only so minimum of this a and b will be the number of products of the form 2 into 5 clear so we know uh, a b is less than a so it is minimum of a and b is nothing but b so number of trailing zeros in 234 factorial is actually b itself so now we have to find b b is actually the number of fives in the prime factorization of 234 factorial so we need to find the number of fives in the prime factorization of 234 factorial 
So to find B, we proceed as follows. The number of positive integers less than or equal to 234 and divisible by 5. We, all, we already know that it is actually the floor of 234 divided by 5. So this is equal to floor of 234 divided by 5 is nothing but some uh, 46.8. Floor of 46.8 is equal to 46. Each of them uh, contributes a 5 to the prime factorization of this. Next, number of uh, integers less than or equal to 234 and divisible by 25. Divisible by 25 is nothing but floor of 234 divided by 25. This is nothing but uh, floor of 9.36. This is equal to 9. So, each of them contributes an additional 5 to the prime factorization of 234 factorial. So, along with the above 46 fives in the prime factorization of 234 factorial, we have 9 more fives in that uh, prime factorial. Next one is number of integers less than or equal to 234 and divisible by 5 cube. This is 5 and this is 5 square and this is 5 cube. That is uh, floor of 234 divided by 125 which is nothing but 1. That is equal to a floor of uh, 1.872 etc. So this is equal to 1. So uh, it is all, it, it also contribute a, an additional 5 to the prime factorization. Okay. Now, next one is number of positive integers less than or equal to 234 and divisible by 5 power 4. So, it will be uh, 0 because 5 power 4 is actually greater than 234. So, now higher power of 5 contributes 5 to the prime factorization of 234. So, the total number of 5s in the prime factorization equals 46 plus 9 plus 1, that is 56. Thus, 234 factorial has 56 trailing zeros. From this example, it follows that the highest power e of a prime p that divides n factorial is given by this equation. That is e equal to n floor of n by p plus floor of n by p square plus floor of n by p cube x plus etc. Such that p power k is less than n. Such that p power k is less than n. If let k be the smallest integer such that p power k is greater than n, then floor of n by p power k is equal to 0. As in this case, floor of 2, 3, 4 by uh, 5 power 4, it is equal to 0. Okay. Then uh, 5 power 5 is also 0, etc. Okay. So, the highest power of a prime p that divides n factorial can be obtained by using this formula that is floor of n by p, floor of n by p square plus a floor of n by p q plus etc. up to p power k where p power k is less than n, it is not greater than n. Okay. So, for example, the largest power of 2 that divides 97 factorial is largest power of 2 that divides 97 factorial is. So, here we have an p equal to 2. So, this is nothing but the power will be e equal to uh, floor of 97 divided by 2, floor of 97 divided by 2 square plus floor of 97 divided by 2 cube etc. Okay, up to 2 power 6 because uh, 97 2 power 7 will be less than 1. Therefore, floor of that value will be 0. So, we have 97 by 2 is equal to 48.2, 97 uh, by 2 square equal to 24 by 0.25. So, from this we get to 48 and from this we get 24 floor of this 24.525 equal to 24. The 97 by uh, 2 cube is equal to 12.125. So, floor of that value is 12. Then next one is 97 divided by 2 power 4 is 6.0625 that is 6. Floor of that value is 6. The 97 divided by 32, 2 power 5 is 32, it is 3.03. So, floor of that value is 3. Then 97 divided by 2 power 6 is 1.51. So, uh, floor of that value is 1. The next one is 97 by 2 power 7 which will be less than 1. So, it will be 0. So, we have adding this we get 94. So, the largest power of 2 that divides 97 factorial is 94. Okay. Now, we have there is a close relationship between uh, the number of 1s in a binary uh, representation of 97 and the 
highest power of 2 that divides 97 factorial. That is, we know in binary representation we have 97 is equal to 1100001. So, here there are 3 ones. There are 3 ones in this binary representation of 97. So, 97 is equal to 94 plus 3 were here we, 3 is actually number of 1s in binary representation and 94 is actually the largest power of 2 that divides 97 factorial. So that is the relationship between number of 1s in the binary representation of 97 and the highest power of 2 that divides 97 factorial. So the number 97 is equal to 94 plus 3 where 94 is the highest power of 2 that divides 97 factorial and 3 is the number of 1s in the binary representation of 97. Okay, So, we can uh, write this as a theorem, theorem 3.14, the proof is not uh, included in your syllabus. Let E denote the highest power of 2 that divides n factorial. E denote the highest power of 2 that divides n factorial and B be the number of 1s in the binary expression of n. Therefore, n is equal to, that is that number n is equal to e plus b, that is e is the uh, highest power of 2 that divides n factorial and b is the number of 1s in the binary representation of n. So, n is equal to e plus b. We can express uh, n as e plus b. Next, we can uh, use the canonical decomposition to find the GCD. To find the GCD, we can use the canonical decomposition. For example, using the canonical decomposition of 168 and 180, find their GCD. So, we are, you, we are going to use the canonical decomposition of these two numbers to find their GCD. By canonical decomposition, we have 168 can be written as 2 cube into 3 into 7. You can verify this. For canonical decomposition of 168 is equal to 2 cube into 3 into 7. And uh, that of 180 is equal to 2 square into 3 square into 5. The common prime factors are only 2 and 3. 7 is uh, there in 168 but it is not in uh, 180. And 5 is a factor of 180 but it is not a factor of 168. So, in GCD there will not be 5 and 7. So, 5 and 7 cannot be appear in the GCD. Okay. So, in GCD, we may have the uh, prime factors uh, 2 and 3. These are the common factors for 168 and uh, 180. Okay. So, also check here we have, if you are considering 2, 2 is actually, uh, we have 3 times in this 168. Here we have 2, uh, 2 times only. So, in the GCD, we have 2 square. Because uh, here we have 2 power 3 and here we have 2 power 2. So, there are 2 times in 180 and 2 uh, times 2 in 168. So, commonly it will have uh, 2 power 2 will have uh, as common. And considering 3, we have uh, 1 3 here in, one, in 168 but there are 2 3s in 180. So, we have only uh, 1 3 in common. So, we can write uh, 3 here. So, this will be the GCD of 168 and 180 that is 4 into 3 that is 12. So, 12 will be the GCD of 180 and 160. It will be a good method to find the GCD of two numbers that is first uh, we have to uh, express the prime factorization or the canonical decomposition of uh, those two numbers and then we are going to take the common prime powers of these two numbers that will be the GCD of that two numbers. Okay. So, from the above example, we can see that GCD of 168 and 180 is equal to 2 square into 3, where it can be expressed as we have uh, uh, the primes are given by 2, 3, 7 and 5 in 180 and 160. So, we can write this as 2 square into 3 can be written as 2 square, 3 power 1, then 5 power 0, 7 power 0, because there are uh, no 5s and 7s in the GCD. So, we can express like this. So, it is actually uh, this uh, 2 power 2. That 2 is uh, nothing but minimum of this uh, exponents. Minimum of 2 and 3. Minimum of 3 and 2. That is the this power 
2 power 2 okay now what about 3 3 power 1 3 power 1 is actually here 3 power 1 and here 3 power 2 so this is the minimum of 1 and the exponents of 3s okay minimum of the exponents of 3s that is 1 comma 2 then what about 5 here we have 5 power 0 and here we have 5 power 1 so 5 power minimum of 0 comma 1 minimum of 0 comma 1 that is 5 power 0 that is this now 7 power 0 here also we have 7 power 1 and this 7 power 0 so 7 power minimum of 1 comma 0 that is nothing but 0 so we can express this also like this also the gcd okay so this technique can be generalized as follows let a and b be positive integers with the following canonical decomposition that means let the canonical decomposition of a b a equal to p power p1 power a1 p2 power a2 etc pn power a n and the canonical decomposition of b b p1 power b1 p2 power b2 etc pn power bn where a i and b i are greater than or equal to 0 that means these exponents may include 0 also okay we are uh, uh, by letting exponents 0 we can always assume that both decompositions contain exactly the same prime basis p i for example in this we already have uh, 2 3 7 as the primes and here we have 2 3 5 but here we included 5 power 0 also and here we included 7 power 0 also so in both of these numbers we have 2 3 7 and 5 as prime factors including the exponents 0 okay so we will have both the decomposition contain exactly the same prime primes pi p1 p2 etc pn and here also p1 p2 etc pn that means uh, the exponents may be 0 okay so the gcd of ab gcd of ab is equal to p1 to the power minimum of a1 comma b1 p2 power minimum of a2 comma b2 p3 power minimum of a3 comma b3 etc and pn power minimum of an comma bn so the product of that factors will be the gcd 